Hi, this is Rob. I'm just going to take a couple minutes to tell you about Quartz Composer, and in another video I'll explain how to use it. So the first thing is, what is Quartz Composer? Uh, uh, it's a free tool by Apple. It's used often by um, Apple developers, but also by uh, people like VJs and uh, any kind of visual artist that uses multimedia. It's good at doing things um, with video and graphics and uh, to some degree sound and other media. Um, if you're familiar with something like Max MSP or Pure Data, they are kind of graphical programming tools. So you actually program by um, in, a, in a graphical way instead of typing code for the most part. And that's what Quartz Composer is. Max MSP is very good at sound. Quartz Composer is very good at anything graphical. So it's it's really kind of, uh, it's Mac only, and the reason is that it's really rooted in the lowest levels of, of Mac OS uh, that relate to graphics. So it's, it's good at what it does. Um, I, this is an example of the kinds of things you might do. This is a project that I did at the New Children's Museum in San Diego. Um, so here's an example of where maybe it happens off, off of a computer screen. This is a projection and this is uh, a sculpture that, um, that I made where uh, kids were able to turn knobs and change the, the imagery on the projection. Uh, there's a lot more information about the project, but you can basically just see that there's a way to connect it with um, something like an Arduino microcontroller and, and to feed back into things like video manipulation and sound and so on. Um, some of the other things that you've probably seen already that are done with Quartz Composer are uh, all of the screensavers and the, uh, the iTunes visualizers and the photo booth filters. All those things are also done with uh, Quartz Composer. There's a guide on the Apple website. The easiest thing to do is just search for this title and you'll find it in Google. Uh, this is um, a little bit out of date, but for the most part it tells you everything you need to know about how to use Quartz Composer. Um, the first thing would be though, how do you uh, download it? And, and the way to do that right now, there's if you look at instructions you may find old information. The way to do it now is uh, if you go to developer.apple.com. I seem to have a hard time finding it sometimes on the site, so I just go to I'll give you the whole URL, devcenter slash Mac. And then um, if you go there, it'll probably ask you to log in. And it's free to become an Apple developer. You just have to sign up. Uh, once you log in, you'll see a list of downloads. If you click on downloads and view all downloads. And somewhere in here, you should see graphic tools for, uh, Mac, for Xcode, which you don't need to have Xcode installed. You just need to download this graphic tools graphics tools bundle. Uh, you click on this, it's 120 megabytes, you download it and install it, and you're, um, one of the things that's in there is Quartz Composer. Uh, it, this is specifically says it's for Mavericks and Mountain Lion. If you don't have one of those, you can just search for uh, graphics tools, and you'll see that there are versions for other OSs too, older ones. Uh, once you've downloaded it and installed it, basically you'll find it in applications. Uh, and I'll show you in another video how to open it and how to use it. But um, if you want more information, I would say there's, a, there, there's tons of information out there. A lot of it is kind of old. This is a bit of a, a niche tool. It's amazing how underutilized it is. It's really powerful and uh, students of mine have found it really easy to use, but uh, it allows for any level of access to it. If you're a programmer, you can uh, write JavaScript code in there. You can also create your own plugins using Objective-C, or you can just use it as a graphical programming tool, which might be a lot easier for, for uh, people who are just beginning. But it's an amazing tool. There's information at this mailing list. Uh, you, could, you could subscribe to this. You might get some really technical information because uh, there are different levels of people on this mailing list, and some of them are uh, very much into um, the, the nitty-gritty of all of the graphics stuff, but it's worth subscribing to and checking it out. There's also, once you get into Quartz Composer, uh, this website called uh, kineme.net, and they are um, they're people who uh, have for a long time made um, Quartz Composer extra tools and plugins and so on, and there's a lot of information here. There's a lot of forums and 
Um, they're actually working on a new project called, uh, I don't know how you pronounce this, V-U-O. And this, the idea is that this might become a replacement for Quartz Composer at some point. This is their own uh, tool. It's not ready yet. Um, it'll be pretty exciting when it happens because it looks like it'll be very similar to Quartz Composer, but m may run on um, Windows and Mac and eventually Linux, which would be pretty great. So um, another project, just to give you another idea of something that might happen, this is a project that I did at the Children's Museum again in San Diego, the new Children's Museum. Um, students uh, or visitors to the museum would come and they would uh, use this iPad and they would write a message related to how they're going to uh, do their part to save the environment. And then um, broadcast on the wall was this uh, Quartz Composer composition that um, that kind of had some movement and activity. One of the things that Quartz Composer's, Composer is good at is motion graphics, so kind of the stuff you see on the nightly news where there is a, things flying around and so on. So this kind of had some animation to it and it would take whatever they wrote uh, on that iPad and it would show up here. So it was pretty exciting for the kids. Um, just to give you an idea of like, you know, this, this is what Quartz Composer sort of looks like. This is the editor. And if I zoom out, you can see this is the entire program, if you will. We call them compositions in Quartz Composer. But this is this is the whole program. And uh, some of this, you can see, involves some scaling. And there's uh, some information about finding image dimensions. There's a sprite, which is to show something on the screen. There's all this stuff that you'll, you'll learn about in another video. But just to give you an idea of the results, here's uh, that very small program is able to uh, detect a face in the video image and follow it around with a, a mask. Pretty sophisticated for uh, such a small program and that just gives you an idea of uh, the kind of thing that that Quartz Composer is good at. Um, lots of examples if you um, I think you can download even more examples than are available uh, in Quartz Composer um, from the Apple website but there's there's lots of information out there it's just uh, sometimes it's a little harder to find than something like processing or the Arduino or Max MSP where there are lots of artists and designers and um, visual people using them um, with Quartz Composer sometimes it's just uh, more developers that are using it but there's no reason why that has to be the case so um, if you have any questions you could email me I uh, haven't been um, working with Quartz Composer lately, but I've done a lot with it in the past, and uh, I might be able to answer questions or point you to where you can find answers. So watch the other videos, and I'll start to explain how this stuff works and how to use Quartz Composer. Thanks.